Right guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to package this asset up into a Houdini digital asset and then start the process of building our user interface so we can hand it off to level designers to, to use in engine. Okay, so we, we, way back when we established the parameters of this asset, what we want to be able to happen, we want it to uh, conform to terrain where we've got that system in place. We want it to be uh, procedural in a way that we can draw out any shape and it will just automatically populate it. So we, we sort of, we're chasing it down, we're getting near towards the end of uh, of the project. I'm just going to give myself a bit more space in my network view because we're going to be doing some work in here. So first things first, we just need to sort of start tidying this up now as we start getting ready to bundle it all up and package it into uh, a digital asset. Um, so I've gone ahead and I've placed UVs and just put a UV quick shade at the end just so I can verify that all my UVs are, are nicely laid out. I don't need to export that into Unreal so I can delete that node. Okay. So what we want to do is start thinking about what parameters we want to give the level designer. Okay. So the first two big parameters that will help initialize this fence are these two here. Okay. So the terrain is obviously going to be very important and also this curve input is going to be very important okay but currently we've we've got this curve that we've sort of drawn out okay so we need to give the user in unreal a way to create their own curve okay and if you remember the object merge node Unreal Engine will recognize this object merge node, okay? So you could draw out a curve in Unreal Engine and then plug it into this and then it'll generate the fence from there, okay? So we're going to create a, an object merge and we're going to call it curve underscore input. All right. Now, Houdini's, um, Unreal Engine and the Houdini Engine is really clever. It'll recognize that if this object merge is called curve has the name curve in it it'll recognize it's it's the input that it's looking for is a curve pretty clever likewise if this has got the name landscape or terrain it'll recognize this as a, a landscape input in unreal so we can really make the, the level designer's life really, really easy by kind of locking out certain options. So for example, this curve input, if the level designer were to input, say like a cube or a sphere, obviously that would break our system. But because we've kind of specified that this object merge is only a curve, it limits their options as well. So we can make our systems robust in that way. Okay. So we can disconnect our existing curve. This was just for testing purposes. So I'm just going to press Y and draw a line through that to disconnect it. And I'm going to plug in our curve input here. All right. And then if we tr trace our way all the way down to the bottom, that's broken our network now because we don't have we don't have a curve input. Okay. So what we could do as a little fail safe. Uh, like a, a, a debugging measure, we could put in just some template geometry, you know? So let's do that. Let's put down a grid and we'll make it say two meters by two meters and we'll drop the rows and columns to two by two. And then just to tidy it up a bit, we'll put down a carve node and you can see this gives us a curve and we can parameter parametrically carve away okay I'm just gonna make some changes here so and then I'm going to plug that into our resample node and then come down so this will be our kind of default test if we see this we know that we've got a bit of an error okay so we'll just leave that there also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that reference on our terrain input. I'm going to just take that out completely. Okay, and our terrain and our fence shoots off into the sky as you would expect. Okay, 
So here we need to be a little bit clever and we need to put a conditional statement in, okay? So we want to switch between our kind of fallback geometry. So we'll plug that into the switch and our curve input geometry, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to test if this object field here is empty, then we want to pass through this side of the switch, okay? However, if this has got a value in it so that we've assigned a curve object to it, we want to switch to this input, okay? So the curve input. And we can do that with a little bit of expression. Uh, like I said, we start, we're starting to move into more tech art, pipeline stuff here. So if you see yourself more of a, as, a, as a game artist who, you know, who wants to sculpt and create beautiful things, this might be moving away from, you know, what you find relevant. But, you know, it's good to know a little bit of this stuff to just sort of see how tech artists work in relation to game artists and the rest of the game development team. So it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely useful. Uh, but like I said, we are moving more into pipeline-y stuff, like moving data backwards and forwards and creating systems uh, for game development projects. Anyway, I digress. So let's fix this switch here so we can automatically switch between the two inputs based on this field here, okay? So on the switch node, we're going to use a, a little expression in this field here, so it will automatically select which of the inputs to pass through, okay? And we can make that connection as well, okay? So currently it's passing through our existing curve, all right? So in the switch node, I'm going to select this field and I'm going to press Alt and E to bring up an expression editor here. Uh, and now don't worry, this is not going to be scary and I'm going to go slow and talk you through it. So what we're doing is we're going to drive this parameter with an expression and the expression is an if statement. So we're going to see, say, if string match, which is a function as in the API. Okay. And then we're going to reference this parameter here, okay? So this is the, the, the string we want to match. A string is just a, a, a series of letters and numbers, okay? So we work with strings all the time. So string match is a useful function that will return a yes or a no answer if these strings match. So we need to reference this object here. Can I do that? Yeah. In fact, no, I can't do that. We'll have to reference it. So we can reference this field using a channel string expression. So CHS, and then point it to that field. So we go up one level. So dot, dot, forward slash. Start typing curve input. And there we find that curve input node. So we're looking at this node now. And the parameter that we're interested in is this one. And you can see the parameter's name there in the tooltip is called obj-path1. So we we'll start typing obj-path1, and there it is. Close those speech marks, close that bracket. So this is the parameter we're looking at. And now we'll put a comma. And the string we want to match is nothing. So we'll just put an open and a close speech mark. So if this parameter currently has the string nothing, then do something, okay? And what we want to do is, if that does match nothing, then we want to pass through input zero on the switch. Otherwise, pass through input one, okay? So that's our expression that will handle this automatic switching. So let's just go through it again slowly. An if statement uh, is, if you've done any sort of coding at school or, you know, in any form of capacity, you should be familiar with an if statement. It's the, it's the classic conditional statement. It'll test something and it'll give you a true or a false answer. Okay. So in this case, we're testing the string that is currently plugged into this parameter. And currently it is set to nothing. So this will return true. All right. So it'll revert to output zero on our switch. So let's hit apply and accept. And as you can see, it's working. 
it's passing through this grid. But if we make a reference in our curve object here to say this curve object, so I can just click and drag it into there. You can see now the switch is automatically switched over to pass through our incoming. So let's just do that again. Yeah, so there we go. We've got our input curve, all right? But if we delete this, you can see how our switch reverts back to our emergency. This is broken template, all right? So that was another use of, uh, of a switch and a bit of expressions. We're gonna use that again uh, in a similar manner to check for the terrain, okay? Um, so I'll go over it again in the next video, so thanks.